What's going on, Clips? Squat! What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dub. It's your boy Ross. And we in the clutch, baby. Hey! Back to ladies and gentlemen, another video today, you feel me? All right, we got a very interesting one. People who somehow survived freak accidents. Now, we've heard, I'm sure, in the past of individuals surviving things that obviously they probably should not be able to survive, but it's, you know, it's sometimes just some of the randomest things and and that's how you you know you got to put it in perspective it probably wasn't that person's time to go if they're surviving something traumatic it wasn't their time so hey, that's a hundred man because you know what we didn't seen a lot of freak accidents and hey yeah. uh you know god was with you on that one but that don't mean yeah, yeah, go yeah, back yeah. and do it again oh no no yeah yeah definitely don't so we're gonna check this out i think this don't. guy's channel is uh what's his channel want to give the proper dr mike Got 11 million subscribers, oh, man. Doctor. All right, Mike. All right. All right. Let's get to it. To, uh, get right into this one, man. Huge thank you to Abbott for sponsoring this video. Pew -up. Julian Whoa. Kopke fell 10,000 feet out of a crashing airplane into the Amazon jungle and survived. I think I've At heard about this. At 17 years old on Christmas Eve I think I've heard 1971, about this Julian yep. boarded lands of flight 508 from Lima to Pucallpa, Peru with her mother and 90 other passengers. Someone said Dr. Mike paying off them student loans. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> well, he he probably been paid him off, but it's it's I've, I've I've always felt some type of way about that. I'm like, if you get through medical school and get into your profession, I think they should be waived because you're actually helping people and saving lives. But they don't give up. They don't give a damn, bro. They'll put you in a half a million amount of debt. Figure it out. Thanks, though. That's that's my personal opinion, but we can have that discussion another day. Passengers. Only 25 minutes into the flight, the oh. plane began to violently shake as it entered a thunderstorm. Oh Looking out God. the window in horror, Julianne saw a bolt of lightning strike the wing of the oh. plane. Chaos quickly erupted as the plane began tearing apart. Julianne, who was still buckled to her seat, was ripped from the plane. She fell 10,000 feet Damn. through the sky into the dense Amazon jungle below. She remained strapped to a row of seats, which actually acted as a makeshift parachute and landed perfectly amongst the high canopy of the jungle softening the crash concussed wow. and rightfully traumatized by the disaster julianne laid motionless on the jungle floor for an entire day when she came to she was alone in the rainforest having only sustained a broken collarbone a sprained knee gashes on her right shoulder and left calf julianne rose to her feet found a bag of candy from the rubble and proceeded to hike for 11 days until she was found by two brothers. today she is known as dr julianne diller a prominent zoologist who has traveled a world advancing the study of animal science and working Still in the same traveling. peruvian jungle where she survived so if there's anything you should take that's wild like i ain't gonna look for my mom that's why she just knew it was ggs to her that's why bro the odds of you falling out of plane the the, the seat that you're strapped to kind of acting like a makeshift parachute to fall onto the forest floor yeah for nothing to attack you nothing to hurt you while you're knocked out for a day to wake up to find a pile of candy and then you just you proceed hike. to start munching and going on about your business like it's she just a, a random crazy. stroll that's oh yeah she 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 won yeah she yeah bro she, she, she did take away from this story it's this wear your seatbelt she the one and not the two uh oh wear your seatbelt phineas gage had a 13 pound metal pole blasted through his skull and survived in 1848 then 24 year old phineas gage was working on a new railroad track in vermont oh, no. his job was simple literally just blow up rocks one day after placing a charge in a hole he began packing sand with a tamping iron when suddenly the iron caught something in the sand, probably a rock or a small piece of metal, and created a spark. This tripped the charge and caused a massive explosion, with Gage standing directly on top of that blast. What happened next has been studied by doctors, myself included, for the last 150 years. The blast rocketed the iron bar upward, penetrating behind his left eye, entering his brain, and then exiting through the top of his skull, finally landing a full 80 feet away.
When his fellow rail workers rushed over, they were immediately devastated and shocked to see he was still alive despite a nearly two inch hole through his entire skull. Not knowing Damn. how to help in this dire situation, the workers rushed him to a nearby doctor who was most definitely unprepared for such a gruesome injury. How? Despite some initial convulsions, Gage never even lost consciousness. And in one of the most miraculous oh. medical cases ever recorded, he survived for 12 years, but with one major caveat. You see, Gage is also considered a vital piece of medical history as he led us to start believing the brain was actually responsible for controlling personality. While Gage did survive the explosion, it's documented that damage to his frontal lobe led his personality to go through some major changes. Dr. Harlow, who treated Gage following the accident, said he is fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in the grossest profanity, which was not previously his custom. Some who knew him have claimed it took him years years to regain his personality. Damn. Reports over exactly how much his personality changed have been the cause of much debate over the years, but regardless, surviving a metal pole flying through your skull that's is nothing crazy. short of a miracle. Yeah, nah, that's wild, bro. That's Jeez. crazy, bro. Like, it was conscious the entire time? All right, Tank, I'm not doing that. Nope. You, you. What do you say? Just read it in the chat. Tank, Tank Coke. Pink, you know, nope, nope. Anywho, uh, yeah, oh, we this is woo. If Aaron not, Ralston cut off his own arm after being trapped oh, by a boulder yeah. for a hundred twenty seven. Yeah, I think minutes. I've heard of this one. Yeah, they made a movie about this. Yeah. yeah. In hours and survived and got a movie made about him. Yep. While hiking alone in Utah, Aaron crash landed into a canyon and had his right here, arm pinned bro. against a wall by an 800 pound boulder. Strategizing with few good options, he decided to wait and scream for help slowly drinking his limited water and eating his two burritos and chocolate bar. Unfortunately, as the days passed and nobody came, he began to get desperate. Drinking water turned to drinking urine and eating his burritos turned to eating nothing. With no help on the way, Aaron had to rely on only himself yeah, and take matters into his own movie. hand. He took out the dusty dull blade oh, in his multi-tool oh, oh. and began Taking his way through his own arm. The pain was excruciating, but the pain quickly turned to panic as he realized his dull blade would never be able to get through the bones in his arm. That's when he realized he missed the primitive tool at his disposal. The boulder itself could be his way out. Through sheer force of will and a rage that only comes after drinking your own pee for several days, Aaron used the leverage of the boulder to twist and break both the radius and ulna bones in his forearm. Yeah. After withering away in a canyon for 120 27 hours, Aaron had removed his entire arm, created a makeshift tourniquet, and freed himself from his natural prison, allowing him to stumble out of the canyon where he was discovered by hikers. Aaron survived and today continues to travel the world, where he not only speaks about his harrowing journey, Whoa. but also navigates rivers, climbs mountains, and hikes canyons. That boy never learned. Yeah, bro. I've seen never learn. it. it uh, oh, it just. Ah. Uh... Jesus Christ. He ain't learned. We're still hiking. Ooh, we, bro. Someone said, <laughs> Pig Dog said, I just would have died. I'm like, well. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Sometimes your will to live is stronger than death. Bro, you have to have a strong will to cut through the tendons, everything, to feel all that yeah. pain. Oh, yeah. And then to break it all up. It makes you squeamish, He's bro. drinking pee and all that, man. Of course. He's ready. Dr. Leonid Rogozov performed an emergency appendectomy on himself and survived. How? In the middle of the 20th century, Russia began aggressively exploring and conducting century. research in Antarctica. And in 1960, sent an expedition to construct a base known as Novolovarskaya. The team what? completed its construction in nine weeks and then had to wait out the winter until the ice thawed so they could be brought back home. Because the team was effectively stranded at the base, they brought along the doctor to ensure the crew could be treated for any illnesses or injuries if they were to arise. Tragically, Dr. Rogozov was the one who got sick. After oh, suffering damn. several hours of unrelenting abdominal pain, weakness, and nausea, Dr. Rogozov diagnosed himself with appendicitis or inflammation of the appendix that can cause severe pain and even death if left untreated. Knowing that there were no surgeons around, he reached for all possible conservative methods to address his situation. But unfortunately for the doctor, none of them were effective, leaving him with only one final choice. 
surgical removal of his appendix performed on by himself. himself on himself he recruited two medical assistants the team meteorologist and the team driver to hold open the abdominal incision and hold a mirror to better visualize his surgical field seated Ooh. upright in a hospital bed taking as many sterilization precautions as possible dr rogozov began the operation the pain and fatigue was excruciating causing him to experience vertigo and take several pauses with his abdomen wide open nevertheless he continued he removed the perforated <laughs> appendix and stitched himself back up over the course of just two hours. After four days, Dr. Rogozov bowel function returned to normal. After five days, his fever was gone. After eight days, his stitches were removed. And after two weeks, he was back to performing heavy work on the base. What a champ. Some bro. people just build different, bro. <laughs> he he he's built, he's built for tough. <laughs> what the bro? Like, nah, bro. This nigga said, well, somebody's gotta do it fine. I'll Chuck said Russian surgery does you. Thanks, bro. This uh, nigga. Hey, hold that mirror. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I got it. Ah. Ah. All right. Uh. Some John Wick stuff. Bro, definitely. I'm like, all right, Lord. Michael Cassidy was split in half by a fire hydrant during a motorcycle crash and survived. Ah! The 25 year old was riding his motorcycle down the water. street when he unexpectedly lost control of his back wheel. At that moment, Michael knew he was going to crash. So, in a split second decision to mitigate damage, he veered in between two cars in the hopes of finding some grass. Unfortunately, Michael didn't see the fire hydrant oh! hitting between the cars. His body flew full speed through the air directly into the hydrant. When he came too he was lying face down but his legs were face up the hydrant had essentially split his pelvis in two known as an open book fracture this is essentially a death sentence in most scenarios fortunately yeah. two off-duty nurses witnessed the brutal crash immediately rushing to his aid and summoning an emergency helicopter to get him to the nearest trauma center upon his arrival doctors placed a special balloon catheter inside his femoral artery and slid it up near his aorta once inflated this blocked blood flow to his lower half, reducing further blood loss and finally allowing doctors to get a good view of the damaged pelvis. It worked. Multiple medical teams collaborated to repair his ruptured bladder, reconnect blood vessels, and reconstruct his entire pelvis with hardware and screws. After a month of physical therapy, Michael now walks with a limp, passes waist through an ostomy bag, and he and his wife just welcomed their first child. Wow. Without a balloon catheter to slow the blood loss and a ton of blood transfusions, Michael wouldn't have made it. Receiving a transfusion. That's crazy. The advancements in technology. Everybody Medical saying, just technology. Kill me now, dog. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my! And crazy the that Elvis, bro. Two there was off-duty off nurses, off nurses there. there at the right time yeah. when that happened. That's man. That ain't, I don't. That ain't God. I don't know what to tell you can mean the difference between life and death when suffering a traumatic injury like the ones in these stories. That's why it's so important to get into the habit of giving. A single blood donation from That's just awesome, one person bro. can help save the lives of three people. You can be that one person. As we head into the winter months, we tend to see donations decline because of the Think weather and holidays, which means donating now and becoming a recurring donor is so important. You can safely donate blood every two months. Blood donation could be getting a reboot too. Abbott and Blood Centers of America are introducing is, a brand uh, new blood portion. donation experience. Huh? Uh, no, I was saying I think this is his portion where he um yeah skips some facts. But nah, man, if you can't donate, man, definitely donate, man. And uh, for people that are you know um, donors and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. that, that a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, matters and stuff like that you know because i know we have our ideologies about people who are donors and whatnot um mm -hmm. i definitely did as well um uh, back in the day but um it's it's important you be saying some saving someone's life and in situations yeah, nah. like that without a blood transfusion he doesn't he doesn't survive like yeah at all so that was wild bro yeah this 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 <laughs> video was definitely uh crazy bro yeah like, God had different plans for every each individual in there. It's like, nah, this ain't it. This, this is not how you go. No, no. And, and even that, if you want to. Even, yeah, it, it's not your time. That's, some, some of these, I'm like, all right, Lord, um, it's been a good one here on this good old earth. But, yeah, uh, bro. Oh, yeah. Cutting my yeah. own arm off? Yeah, I don't got the strength. Yeah, bro. I that, haven't that, eaten in days. Yeah, nah, that, that's, definitely, that's definitely wild, man. Oh, it was. But, hey. 
if y'all enjoyed that it was if it was informative enough for you yeah. make sure you run up the likes down below let us know what else we need to be checking out man keep on supporting us through this journey man definitely trying to check out more interesting videos like these so continue to let us know some ideas of other ones that we can check out but uh continue to spread love be love keep god first and we catch you in the next one peace out already this bitch is from Houston if you got a problem then we got the solutions and there's no illusion I made this shit happen I'm living life lucid I'm switching my strategies now they hate on me cause I'm causing casualties but why are they after me deep inside they know they can't handle half of me